Chip, chip, chitty-ho and all that good stuff. It's February 24th, Thursday. I'm John Zadar and you're watching On Top and Hot. I like to go out there and browse around the OTC market. I like to look at penny stocks, see if I can find something interesting. And there's a lot of interesting things happening right now. It's just tough to explain most of them. But I've got some peculiar little stocks I want to show you today that could make us some money. It's not about the catalyst. It is about the crowds. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to start all of this over here at the otcmarkets.com website. I always start my due diligence on an OTC stock here because it's the only site where FINRA and the SEC put information daily about every OTC stock. It's actually been put here for investors to use and it's free. You don't even have to be a member and log in. Just come to the page and look for what you want. Voila, easy peasy. We're looking at AWSI now. This is Aria Wireless Systems. Finished today at 47 cents with 95% gains. She's on the pink tier and current. She has a verified profile, but I don't see a verified transfer agent and she's gonna need that. And I think that's in the works right now, as a matter of fact. Now, they're calling her a shell risk, meaning that she's supposed to be reporting revenues. Fact is, she's not making any money. You come over here, you can see there's nothing on the board, not for the annual or quarterly. There's just nothing there. But the fact of the matter is, I see them more as a shell company. They haven't been doing anything in a long time. They used to be a wireless data communication company when they first came on the market. But that was a while ago. And this company's been off the market. They just went pink here uh, February 8th. And you'll see by the chart, that was exciting. It has been climbing ever since. And though she's doing nothing and making nothing, she is giving gains for the last, oh, I don't know, two weeks. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Look at this. She's a shell company making no money and she's already at 47 cents. Now, there are things out there and I'm gonna share that with you. So what was the relative volume around this company today? About five times as much. We went from 41,000 to about a quarter million shares today. And again, we're only at right here. That's the total share count for the entire OTC market, 11.8 billion shares. Last year at this time, we were doing between 50 and 60 billion shares. That shows you how far down the ladder we are. So they are increasing there. What is their share structure? Right, I went and looked at this because they don't list it here. I normally take the unrestricted shares. Now they do have a float and that's not too far ago. I mean, that was just a couple weeks. They say it's 5.2 million. I've read 3 million. You're gonna read that too. Uh, I didn't find that, no. I did a Google search just to see if I could. I could not find the information anywhere. I really couldn't. This is what we have right there. So I'm gonna presume 5.2, but considering they've only got 7.4 million in the entire outstanding shares, yeah, it's gonna be a real, real low float. I also read that the uh, 2.5 million are owned by insiders, the difference, it's all insiders. So we've got a really low float on a stock that's doing nothing right now, but has been hinting around that they're going to. Financials, there's nothing, we looked at that. There was their attorney letter, that's what got them current. They had all this stuff go in. Once you get the attorney letter in and it covers each period that you filed for, they stamp it, you get back on the market. And that's what happened here. There is no news to give you. All we really have is a tweet. And rather than going to Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> I just brought it over here. So this came out at, what, 21 hours ago. AWSI, 3 million float. I don't know where they get that, but we believe it's 5.7. Either way, it's a very low float. Squeaky clean shell. He has, he's cleaned this up, it's got no debt, it's got nothing hanging over it, it's just waiting for a reverse merger. It's waiting for a deal or maybe an acquisition. I don't know, but it's open and ready to be used. Uh, talk to management and they told me they are under NDA, non-disclosure, and can't discuss anything. So that kind of infers there's something he could say, but somebody has told him they can't say anything. So that just kind of teases all the investors to dream, dream big, what is it gonna be? And this is what's going on. You know, I see this over and over again, especially here this last week. Stocks at triple zeros are running right now with little 
to go on. I mean very little except speculation, hope, dreams. This is what is making them run because news that has actual facts and catalysts, these stocks aren't moving. So it's a bit strange to say the least. All right. That's really all we've got. There is nothing else to be said about this company. So let's go take a look at that chart because it really is telling the story. AWSI six month, four hour chart. This is on TOS think or swim. That's a free charting platform that you can use just for signing up at TD Ameritrade. You don't actually have to trade with them. You don't have to give them any money. Just keep your account open and you can use this too. So this is a very interesting chart. All the way back here, we had a huge giant jump and I went looking. I actually took this company's name, put in the dates, and I could not find any news. Now, this was all the way back in September, September 1st. I can only presume that filing started coming in or something to wake the investor up that this wasn't a dead stock anymore. And people got real excited. And even after this huge jump, which happened to go from three cents all the way up to 40 cents. Holy cow, 40 cents. So you're looking at like 13, 1400% gains right there. Came down, but it stayed up here, right? We're right now, we're at 47 cents. She fell all the way down here. Now, of course, you come in on the 20 day, one hour, there's gonna be a low bubble there. Boom. So we're at seven cents after being at 40. And she has just gone right back up to 48 cents on a high today. Now this was only back on the 2nd of February and it was the 8th of February right there. Right here folks, that jump, that's the 8th. When she went pink current, she jumped from six cents up to 20 cents. So you had a 300% jump here, it fell back, but it has been holding that and now look, She's just growing, growing, growing without a catalyst, without any merger news or acquisition news, just that she is clean, she's got no debt, she's maintaining her pink status. People are excited. And this had a crowd of people around it, 92 trades. There weren't a lot of companies today with a bunch of trades and the ones that did were all triple zeros, triple zero one, triple zero two, triple zero three. And there wasn't much going on. This one is down there too, but the price, the price does not reflect the type. This is what I would expect for triple zero seven, honestly, but it's already up at 48 cents. Everything looks strong here. We're burning fire. We've got a tidal wave going on. The price is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and pushing up. I don't know what to say, except there's a lot of excitement built around this. So just watching AWSI, if she starts to pull away in the morning again, you may want to jump on for a ride because I don't know how long this is going to go on. And if for Pete's sake, they come out with an actual piece of news of something they're going to do, I would expect another bounce out of this one. So there are people watching it and that's the important part. Where there's people, there is price action and that's how we make our money. We're now taking a look at Cuba Beverage Company, ticker CUBV, finished the day at 0 0.0013, a real nice price. Just get to 0 0.0026 and you've doubled your money. That's just a smidge of a move. She had 18% gains today. However, she almost hit 100% gains. She's on the pink tier in current and she's got all the respected green ticks over there. So she looks good. She's a self-proclaimed shell company, not making any money. They're not doing any business right now. Though they were not too long ago, they were selling beverages. That is what they did. But as you can see, Cuba Beverage Company is in the process of changing its name and stock symbol. Folks, I gotta tell you, just that in itself alone, without anything else, is a catalyst. It absolutely is because it turns on the hope factor. This is where people get to say, oh, they're leaving something bad for something better. They're going to get something more. I want to be a part of that. So people, as soon as they see that the management is making a change, and this is going to be what? An acquisition, a reverse merger. What is it going to be? Whoa, we're excited. It's Christmas. So just that in itself.
So there has been a lot of relative volume around this company because the company promised them something a while ago. And now I don't know how many people read it, maybe a lot. They've made a tweet on their Twitter account, which changes everything. And I'm going to share that with you. But there has been a lot of volume around this company. Today there was 105 million and they normally do 41. So they did about two and a half times their normal volume today. Their share structure. Oh my goodness. Whoa. First time I've looked at that. 2.1 billion shares. That's a lot of shares, folks. They've got no financials. They're a shell company, not making any money. And I don't anticipate we're going to see anything over here yet. No. This is where you'd see an 8K. If they do a reverse merger or make a deal, it'll come here before it hits the press. You can't put anything out on news unless it's happened. And this is where it happens. So I always like to look over here. Now, the company hasn't got any news current. This is all the way back to 2020 <laughs> and even back then company under new management and will release details. Well, that's kind of the boat we're in right now and we've got nothing that's been imported. Really the only thing we have is their Twitter account. So this is their own Twitter account, Cuba Beverage Company. Now I have highlighted the word lithium because as it says here, I should clarify, I will be seeking merger with a lithium extraction technology company. This will most likely require another trip to the Salton Sea. Oh, <laughs> now the reason I've done this is because this was the deal that they made back here in September. They told everybody we're going to be merging with this lithium extraction technology company and everybody's been waiting for it waiting for it. And all through September, they never talked about it. Do you see any more highlights? There's October. They're not talking about it. December, not a word. January, nothing. People are getting a little frustrated. And then here was the last old tweet, January 24th, and two came out today. Two came out. The last one says Cuba Beverage Company has appointed a new CEO and board of directors. Whoa, they've cleaned house. All new board of directors and a new CEO. So CUBV is working with attorneys, certified accountants, and representatives of the OTC markets in an effort to maintain CUBV's current status. Well, that doesn't sound very reassuring. They're fighting to keep and maintain that current status. They could fall back to Pink Limited or something. I don't know, but it doesn't sound great. The other tweet that came out today, CUBV's new management has determined that it will not further pursue the potential lithium deal discussed by the prior CUBV management. Out with the old, in with the new, not just the people, but even the plan. Uh, CUBV's new management team intends to announce material events as they transpire. Well, that's an indefinite. That's not next week. That's not next month. It's like, okay, now what? So they've cleaned house. They've kicked everybody out, brought new management in. Obviously they're changing their name. They're changing the ticker, but I don't think they have a clue to what yet. And they have not given us a clue what they are going to even be looking at or when they're going to be looking. And still the stock has all these people around it. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it shows us. CUBV six month, four hour chart. And I can see I've been here before. Yeah, I sure have. I put these blue lines in here. When I do a video and we talk about a stock, I used to do these morning bounces. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Morning bounces. We'd look at a stock <laughs> right there. We would look at a stock that it had a big gain and looked like it had leftovers. Everything was still going up at the end of the day. It just stopped because the bell stopped it. And I presume it's going to continue running in the morning. And well, my goodness, did we call this one right? So we looked at this before and it definitely took off. Where did we see this? We've seen this down at a penny, one penny, and it went up. Well, the very next day it went up to three cents. The following day up to four cents, even a little more. So there was a 300% jump the following day after we looked at it. Another 100% on top of that the following day. But look how fast it threw it all that away. And we're close up right now. Let's back out again. So that's what that blue line is there for. And I can't remember. What is the date we got there? 827. 
I can't remember what Cuba was doing. This is probably, well, this is October, right? That's right, October. And I just showed you it was early September. They announced the merger with the lithium company. This is what people did. They were very excited about that. Now they feel like, well, <laughs> they feel like they've been stabbed in the back. We hit a low bubble here of triple zero nine. Goodness gracious, folks. That's, that's over 40,000% down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way, way down there. Let's come in on the 20 day, one hour. See what she looks like. Wow. You can see she's getting no volume here. No volume at all. She did have a bounce. Believe it or not, that is almost a 300% bounce. It sure is. That is a penny to three pennies. You don't have to move much when you're cheap, right? One penny to three penny is 300% bounce. Back here, we did another one. That was a 250% bounce. And that was in the last 20 days. So we've had two 300% bounces in two days. And then today, then today, it doesn't look like much. I mean, you're looking at that going, we're really talking about this? Well, here's the thing. You see this MACD? It is pushing up slowly and you don't really get anything until it's over the signal line. And it is just now getting over the signal line. That's that floor right there. And it's just gotten over it. It did a crossover here and it's on top of it. It's just getting above the 50 right now. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. Whew, bars are a little bit bigger, right? So we've been going sideways here, had a dip down to that triple zero nine. That's where we just saw it. It bounced off that all the way up to one five. So you're, that's about a hundred percent bounce. That put it above the 200. It's been trying to hang on to that. You can see it is doing everything it can to hang on to that 200. And I don't know if it's just because it's come on onto the screen. You can see it didn't exist here before. Now we can actually see it. We can actually trade using it. We couldn't see it before, so that may be one of the reasons it was down. But she is trying to hang on to it, and today she had a giant bump late in the day, I should say. It didn't start moving till about uh, 11, 11.15 in the morning. So out of nowhere, she took a huge jump from uh, just over a penny. Well, double zero one, double zero one to double zero two. There was a hundred percent jump right there. That took uh, 15 minutes, 5, 10, 15, 20. So you had 20 minutes of growing there. So you could have gotten, you know, 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent. 80%, you had time to take out of this. Don't look for the ceiling. Take those 20s, 40s, and 50s. Even if you don't get it all, you got something. And if you can grab something every day, you'll never go broke, go broke leaving money on the table. Now, it did fall away very quickly, and it came right back down to our 200. And it's just sitting there. Looks like we have a crossover just about to happen. That blue is getting back on top. We're coming out of the red just pushing towards the signal line, though we don't have a lot of activity on the RSI. Looks pretty planted. But we don't know what's going on now, do we? We have no clue. I don't know what was three hours ago. That's from my time. My time right now, that would take it down to two o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I'll guarantee you, two o'clock in the afternoon, it had already fallen. So it wasn't the tweets that brought this down. It wasn't the tweets. But what even pushed it up? Ugh. That's the problem with some of these stocks that have lots of people around them. They just look at technicals. They see things sit up. This may have had a low right there that just got people excited, you know? Bam, hit a low there. And it is low. It's way low down here. And this may have excited people because as soon as they seen that turn up here, everyone said, oh, it's going to start rising. And this is when you get people in just on technicals. They don't even know what the news is. So this thing took a big bounce. You can see the technicals got very strong and then they're done. It's over. One wave. So to tell you what this is going to do, I can't. All I can say is obviously they're in change mode. Something's going to occur. And when? the PRs come out and tell you anything. This has 300% bounces regularly, 100% bounces every other day. So I keep my eye on CUBV just for quick gains. So now we're looking at SPRN. This is Supernova Energy. And for all practical purposes, it is an oil play. They're catching gains because of what's going on with oil. 
but they just came out with the news press a little bit ago they created a new subsidiary and they're adding on to what they're doing now with something completely different and it's pretty interesting and I'm going to share that with you now they finished the day at 0.013 that sounds vaguely familiar. They did 16% gains today. They're on the pink tier, they're current, and they've got those precious green ticks we always like to see over there. So they look good. Now, as I said, the company is an oil company. For the last few years, they have been accumulating oil producing wells in oil friendly states, Kentucky and Kansas. Now, I'm not sure all of what they've been doing, but here recently they came out with the news press which has got some attention and it has kicked the volume up. Right now they're doing about 328,000 shares compared to 43,000 shares daily. So it is picking up. It's not huge, but it's growing. What is their share count? A lot better than a billion. We got 117 million shares. I'm not gonna call it low, but I'm gonna call it normal. That's nothing to be afraid of. What sort of Finances do we have? Well, they're making money every year, but how does it look on the quarterly? Ah, we got nothing. I don't know why that is either. Hopefully the news that we look at is gonna change that. And their disclosures, we got anything current? Nope, not since 2019. So, let's just take a look at the news. Now, as I said, this has been going on for a few years, this accumulation of oil producing wells in Kansas and Kentucky. We're back at 2017, 2018. You can see they're gaining and grabbing as many as they can get. Then up here in December of 2021, they go current, right? They've been off the market and I can't tell you for how long. There's just no information. I would have to do some digging. So they just went current here in December. Then in January and February, we have had two pieces of news. They're both about the same thing, entering the greenhouse gas exhaust mitigation space and then creating a new subsidiary, Clear Sky, to do that. So this last piece of news came out February 15th and they're telling us that this was previously announced January 19th that Supernova Energy had recently formed a majority owned subsidiary called Clear Sky. Nice name for a greenhouse gas mitigation company. That's what it's turning into. Greenhouse gases are a collection of natural elements and compounds such as nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, methane, and other volatile organic compounds. We are developing a revolutionary, catch this, pollution reduction as a service, PRAS. You've heard of software as a service, S-A-S-S. -S. Well, this is pollution reduction as a service that allows us to help known emitters of greenhouse gases lower their carbon footprint by destroying thousands of tons of emissions. Our PRAS uses revolutionary technology to collect, liquefy, and process the harmful greenhouse gases emitted by industrial smokestacks into usable forms. Very interesting. Clear then sells the processed liquefied gas. The result is possible net zero emissions for our customers that can now qualify to claim carbon credits by reducing their carbon footprint while contributing to a future of clean air. Now this is very important. This company is going to charge to put on their exhaust cleaner system to get all that carbon out of there. They're going to get a byproduct that they're going to be able to sell but that's going to cost these other companies money. But once they clean up, they qualify for carbon credits. Carbon credits are well a huge rebate that you're going to get from the government. So they're going to get that money back and maybe even more. And that's going to be a great incentive for this product to sell to the big companies. Now they tell us that they have global rights to this so they can do it all over the world. And they're initially starting with the charcoal industry. I got to be honest, folks, I didn't know there was a charcoal industry. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but they're going to not only focus on that, they're going to focus on electricity production, heavy industry and commercial and residential. They're going to use it everywhere they possibly can. So on top of the oil, which is hot right now, they are now working with this greenhouse gas for smokestacks which is going to be huge. And I don't know what the competition is out there, but if you can help companies qualify for carbon credits and get money back after they've had to pay out money to clean up, it's going to help people want to clean up and it's going to help them want to buy this. So I think it's a hot 
product. Let's go see what that chart looks like. SPRN six month, four hour chart. Look at the size of those bounces. No, I didn't stretch it. That's just the way it looks. The average bounce here is between 60 and 100%. Yeah, every one of those, that's a huge one. That one's gonna be a lot bigger than that. That one's going from nine up to, that's almost 200% that one. So we've got between 50 and 200% bounces both directions we got some huge huge red bars in here but look every time it comes down to that 200 it comes flying back up down flying back up so this has huge huge bounces she's been above the 200 for a long time just here recently went under it and just recently has started to come back up let's take a look at that 20 day one hour view so we hit a bubble here and you can see we are on the one hour. So she was going across, fell, and one hour later was back up here. So that was a fall to double zero six seven and then it jumped back up to one. So you're looking at about 80% jump in one hour. Bink. Then it fell again <laughs> and it jumped again. Uh, what was the float on this thing? 117 million not a small float but definitely bounces for goodness sake so she has been above the 50 all this time she's she doesn't want to go below it look every time she goes below that 50 she comes back up she does not want to be below that 50 which is a very good technical to keep your eye on let's come in on that five day five minute that was the 50 on the one hour five day five minute all right we don't have a 50 we don't have a 200. All we've got is a 20 day and a 10 day. So you can't even play with those down on the five day. I couldn't use it to trade with. I'd have to jump back over to the hour. So we had another low here. And when was this? Yesterday, just over a penny. Today, she went up to about 167. So you're looking at about 60% gains there on that jump. And you know, folks, these aren't giant jumps, but they're regular. They're regular jumps over and over again from 60 to 200% repeatedly. Every time she's coming down to a low, she's coming back off of it. And if you don't get greedy and just get out quick, she'll fall soon enough and you can get back in at a cheaper price and ride it back up. This thing is a regular little roller coaster. Now, she did just come out with this new product. I don't know how long it's gonna take for that to take off. Maybe she'll start introducing it to certain companies and we'll start seeing this company and that company, maybe a big name here or there of somebody who's gonna use it. That's in the future. So right now you're looking at those bounces unless, unless you see this as an investment. Let, let me back up here a just a little bit, looking at it from that perspective. I'm gonna tighten this up just a wee bit. All right, so we're pretty much up just a little bit above the 200. We're right in her average price. You can see there's not much of a change. If we put a line there and right about there maybe, there's the channel she's in. She's been in that channel for a long time. Now, it's a big channel. I'll agree with you. It's a big channel, but she's not getting out of it. But today she did. She poked her head out one time here and that was at 017 and that is 0168. So it, it's about ready to try to break the high, but it's gonna need something. And I'll tell you, oil could be it. Oil could be all it takes right now to push above that. And if it gets above that, it could be a whole new game. It actually could be a new game. So I would keep my eye on SPRN for it being hot for oil. It is rising on that right now. And they've just had news with this new decarbon greenhouse mitigation product. And they're gonna make money selling whatever that liquid gas is. So it's an interesting stock. They've got some interesting things, but it's gonna need a little bit of time. But in the meantime, look for these bounces. Watch for that next low. Get in on the low. Get out on, don't wait for the high. Get out on the 20, 30, 40% gain and see how many times you can grab 20, 30, 40%. Even if it goes to 60 or 80, get used to taking 20, 30, 40% and getting out and see how many times you can do that. You're going to feel good no matter what you leave on the table. I promise. A peculiar group of stocks to show you. I know, but it was a peculiar sort of day. Really, you go look at the OTC market, look at the trades. 
most of the stocks that got the most trades were triple zero three triple zero two i mean really they were all down there and there really wasn't anything going on so it was about where the crowds were but was there a reason to be there and can we get anything out of them being there because if they're going to put money on the table we might as well take it you never know where you're going to find these gains sometimes it isn't a bounce sometimes it isn't a low bubble and sometimes it's in a catalyst it's all about where you're looking remember folks the more you know <laughs> the more you're going to grow see ya